Have you ever done that or seen that in some code? You know, you have an object and you need to find out precisely what type it is. So of course you just use the is operator. Well that is a bad thing to do. As much as possible you should avoid using that operator. It is inefficient, it's a violation of the dependency inversion principle and quite honestly I find it makes the code look ugly. Now of course there are some cases where you cannot avoid using the is operator. And I will mention those at some point. But let me at least talk about one alternative. The visitor design pattern. I'll explain how it works, give an example of how you can use it, but I'll also talk about some caveats you should keep in mind when using a visitor. To illustrate my point, I'll be taking as an example units in real-time strategy games like Age of Empires. We will have a class for each archetype of unit, and I'll show you how you can use the visitor pattern to add some features to our units. Now just to be clear, I don't actually recommend you rely on inheritance to handle the various types of units. This code merely serves to demonstrate how useful the visitor can be. Instead, I'd recommend the use of composition or better yet a data-oriented approach. But all of that can be the subject of a future video. As usual, all the code I produce is available on my GitHub, feel free to use it as much as you want. I left a link in the description. And one last thing before I begin, I recently got the community tab back on my channel page. So every once in a while, I'll leave some polls to know what you want me to work on next. So if there's a subject you want me to cover, be sure to vote. Now before I explain what the visitor design pattern is, I should probably explain first what design patterns are. Basically, design patterns are some common reusable solutions we can use to organize our classes a bit better. So the same way we have some algorithms we can reuse for some logical problems such as sorting, partitioning and many more, design patterns can be reused to solve software architecture problems. In this case, the visitor design pattern helps add operations to a class hierarchy without having to modify each class of the hierarchy. In our example, the class hierarchy represents all the units we can have in our RTS game. To do so, rather than having to add virtual functions for each operation you want to implement, we have a class for each operation, and those classes are the visitors. Now to implement a visitor, we first need to create an interface with as many functions as we have classes in our hierarchy, and each function will take as a parameter a given class. Each class implementing this interface will correspond to an operation one can perform on the classes of the hierarchy. Next, we must add a single abstract function in the parent class of the hierarchy that takes that interface as a parameter. By convention, we usually call this function accept, and it serves to execute the operation implemented in the visitor. Each class in the hierarchy must then override that function to call the right method in the visitor. Finally, if you've done a bit of research on the visitor design pattern, you will most likely have seen that this pattern relies on double dispatch to work which is basically a fancy way to say that we rely on two virtual function calls. In practice, this pattern works because we have a first virtual call, the accept method, that will determine which type of class we'll execute the operation on. And we have a second virtual call that will determine the effect of the operation itself. One nice way to represent all this is with a 2D table. On one axis we have the class types, and on the other the operation types. So if we accept an operation A on a child B, this will be the called method. And if we accept an operation C on a child A, we'll call that method. To better understand how this pattern works, the best thing I can do is to show you what happens step by step when we use a visitor. So let's go back to our RTS unit example. As I mentioned, we have a parent class simply called unit, and a whole lot of classes inheriting from that parent. So we have a swordsman unit, a priest unit, a horseman unit, a boat unit, and many more. Let's start by implementing our unit visitor interface. As I mentioned, it shall have as many functions as we have unit types. Next, we'll add the accept function to the base unit class and implement it in all of its children. And now we can add as many operations to our units without even having to modify the unit's code. So just for fun, let's write one that computes the damage any given type can inflict. To do so, we'll create a unit damage visitor class that implements the unit visitor interface. So that means having to write an implementation for each class of the hierarchy. And if you want to add more operations to the units, you simply need to write more classes implementing unit visitor.
Since the visitor is a class, we can store some member variables inside. In this case, we can store the damage the units can do. That way, if we use the same visitor instance over a list of units, we'll have the total damage all units can perform. Now, let's try to execute some code using that visitor. Let's start by creating a list of units and a visitor that computes the damage a unit does. Next, we'll iterate over the list of units, and for each unit in that list, we'll accept the visitor. So if a swordsman unit accepts the visitor, it will execute its own overridden version of the accept method, which in turn will execute the visit swordsman unit method on the visitor, which itself will compute the damage the swordsman does. But if we have a horseman unit that accepts the visitor, it will be the horseman's accept method that will be called, that will in turn call visit horseman unit, which finally will compute the damage the horseman does. So as you can see, each unit's type will ensure that the right operation is performed. So now that you've seen how you can use a visitor, you may already have some ideas of how you can implement it in your own projects. However, I'd like to take the time to add a word of caution. Though the visitor can prove to be an especially powerful tool, it does have some cons I want you to keep in mind. First of all, people tend to say that adding classes to the hierarchy can be a pain since it would mean you'd have to update the visitor and each class implementing it. As such, it's much better to use a visitor on a class hierarchy you know won't change much. Personally, I don't find that to be an issue since it's easy to find the classes implementing the visitor. Secondly, since visitors are external to our class hierarchy, that means it does not have access to the private members of our units. To bypass that, you may have to add some accesses you wouldn't normally add. Or, in C++, you can use the friend keyword. But that's a slippery slope I wouldn't recommend you tread unless you know what you are doing. Thirdly, as I've mentioned, we can't always use the visitor. For example, let's imagine we download a library that has some cool features. However, that library is closed source. So that means we cannot modify that library not even to add our accept methods in the class hierarchy. And finally, given the fact that visitors rely on two virtual function calls, the performance of your game can be impacted. In most cases, this might not be an issue. However, it would be unwise to use a visitor on a large number of instances, especially in some performance-critical parts of your code. For example, like in the game engine code. Now, if you are up for some reading, I wrote a short blog article where I discussed the results of a benchmark I performed on the visitor and several alternatives. You'll find a link in the description. If you aren't interested, the bottom line of the article is that in c -sharp, the two virtual calls don't have that much of an impact, so it's probably fine to use a visitor in that case. However, it's in languages such as C++ that you can notice a huge impact. So for some better performance, you can eliminate the virtual function calls. For example, by using an enum and a switch. Well, that sure was a lot more than I'd expected when I first started writing this tutorial. Anyway, you now know of the visitor and its pros and cons. I hope this knowledge will prove to be useful to you, and if you want me to talk more about some software architecture concepts such as the solid principles or design patterns, let me know in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial, if you did, please consider liking and subscribing for some similar content. And if you have some questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section or join the Discord server. I'll be glad to answer. In any event, have fun coding and see you next time!